Welcome. Welcome to this, the eighth video in our Thy Kingdom Come series of reflections on the Lord's Prayer. The words I'll be reflecting on today are, but deliver us from evil. This is the final phrase in the biblical version of the prayer, at least as it's found in chapter six of Matthew's gospel. It doesn't appear at all in the version recorded by St. Luke in chapter 11 of his gospel. The very last words, of course, of the prayer as we know it are, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And although these words are apparently very ancient, it, it seems likely that they were added some time after the original Gospels had been completed. I'll reflect on those final words in tomorrow's video. Because the phrase, but deliver us from evil, belongs with the previous words, lead us not into temptation, it continues that same cry to God for strength in our weakness, help in the midst of trouble that I reflected on yesterday. But there is another element here. In the biblical version of the prayer, deliver us from evil, is most often translated rescue us from the evil one or save us from the evil one. That additional element is the sense that besides our inner capacity for evil, there is also an evil beyond us, an outer dimension, if you will, that there is a power in all that is ungodly, which could be made into a character, the evil one. You may remember Jesus praying to God the Father for his disciples in chapter 17 of John's Gospel. He says, I ask you to protect them from the evil one. Or there's the passage from the first letter of Peter, which we often say during night prayer or compline. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is prowling round like a roaring lion, seeking for someone to devour. Resist him, strong in the faith. Whatever you think about the reality of an evil one, this phrase amplifies the plea to God I reflected on yesterday. Leaders not into temptation begins and deliver us from evil extends that plea. But deliver us from evil has been translated by the scholar Neil Douglas Klotz in ways which catch some of the nuances of Jesus's language Aramaic and the Hebrew of the Jewish scriptures he would have known. Nuances which are lost in the Greek renderings. One such translation is Deceived neither by the outer nor the inner, free us to walk your path with joy. Deceived neither by the outer nor the inner, free us to walk your path with joy. And another version reads, don't let surface things delude us, but free us from what holds us back. Don't let surface things delude us, but free us from what holds us back. These are the cries of the heart which certainly resonate with me. There is injustice, violence and corruption in our world, and we are called by God to oppose it boldly everywhere it is found. We ask for God's spirit to enable us to do just that. In our prayer to God, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We also ask that we be kept free from the contagion of evil, from the corruption of material and spiritual wealth, free from the violence of prejudice and thoughtlessness. We pray for liberty from the evil of injustice, for freedom from inner shame and forgetfulness. Then we may be free to bear the good fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, 
and self-control. This is the flow which the Lord's Prayer promotes from the unripe fruit of inner stagnation. We pray to be rescued and then from our own transformed hearts and lives, God's love may flow into our world. I'm going to end this reflection by praying using some words from Psalm 31. Let us pray. To you, O oh Lord, I come for refuge. Do not let me be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to help me. For you are my strong rock and my fortress. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me. O oh Lord, faithful God. Amen.